Hello YouTube, CJ with Georgia Astronomy and we are on the final requested video and this is on how to set up the imaging tab. So <clears throat> this is probably, it should be the default, it may or may not be depending on how it's loaded. Uh, and basically uh, I've had people sit there and say, well mine doesn't look anything like yours does, why is that? Well, that's because you got a little bit of uh, work to do in order to get it to uh, look the way that you want it to look. Uh, so basically the imaging or imaging tab, this is where you're going to play for the rest of the evening and it gives you the opportunity to pull in a bunch of information. If you look up here from the top left to the right, uh, we'll see that imaging of course is the main one that we're on right now. This is the image. Uh, then you have the camera, your filter wheel, your focuser, rotator, telescope, guider, sequence, switch, flat panel, and weather. And then in addition for things to look for, you then have statistics as well as HFR history. Over onto the right side, you have the tools. So you have the imaging. You then have image history along with plate solving, polar alignment, autofocus, and manual focus targets. So looking at it, you'll see that it, right now it's downloaded or the way that it's set up is uh, kind of like a an Excel uh, based tab system where you have you know primaries then you have all these uh, going across the bottom and it's kind of a pain in the ass to look at it this way you don't want to be jumping around so in order to make it uh, a little bit easier uh, what you can do is disconnect these and then redock them like you would do into SGP so for instance if I left click hold on image history and then pull it out you'll see that it is now mobile and I can move it into different areas I can put it up to the top I can put it over to the left or to the right or to the bottom. If I come all the way over here to the side, I can then release it into the side. So at this point, we now have plate solving up, which is uh, the primary tab, followed by image, and then followed by camera, filter wheel, etc. So if image is where I'm typically going to be staying at. Uh, for the most part, uh, because I always want to see what's coming in and then everything else should in my way I have mine set up is to move around that. So just to start this off, I'm going to just kind of create uh, a little bit of space uh, in order to make things work for me. And then in order to create left or right or sides or ups or downs, if you left click hold on those bars, move those over, you can then create more space. So filter wheel, I don't have a filter wheel. If you don't have something that's automatically popped up, there's two ways you can remove it. Number one is you can go up and click on the X to remove it if you want to do it that way. Uh, also two, uh, if you don't want to hit the X, if you go to its icon, you can take the rotator icon just by simply clicking it and it goes away. So once again, image is my main. That's what I want to look at. Image is what's going to be coming in from the camera in real time. Now there is what's called imaging. Uh, imaging is not to be confused with image. So imaging is the camera control for you uh, that is basically immediate. So in this particular case, uh, if I've slewed over to some place and I am uh, just want to check sky glow or anything of that nature, uh, this is where I would be able to take manual control of the camera. Uh, right here. So I would leave it a one by one, change my exposure time to one, and I can do either an individual shot or I can put it on loop and then loop it every one, two, three, four, five seconds. Uh, if I'm using a Botanov mask, then I can actually put it onto video, live view, which will then make it a continuous video as I'm trying to uh, adjust with a Botanov mask. So again, the image hasn't gone. It's just as we've moved things out, it's they've forwarded moving forward, right? So Again, plate solve, I can take out, redock someplace else. Now, the way mine is set up, I usually have a plate and image on the same screen. Reason being is because I'm not going to be plate solving at the same time that I'm pulling images in. Uh, focuser, I am going to move over here. So we're going to just going to pop that right there. And as you can see, it'll start stacking wherever I want it to go. Uh, telescope control, we're going to put that over there as well. And then uh, plate solving again. I usually leave plate solving and uh, image together on the same tab. And then I'll move guider over to here. So now it's starting to look a little bit more uh, the way I would have mine typically set up. Um, plate solving. Let's just take plate solving out for right now. So to give you an idea, again, we're on imaging. 
depending on your color schemes, you may be hard pressed to see where the delineating lines are at. So I believe if you go to, uh, yeah, well, here's the dark view. Um, it's kind of hard, but what does come up is if you see where it highlights, you're actually highlighted on, you're in that particular section. So if you go to move these, you'll see if you grab it where it's uh, highlighted, you're actually pulling it, you're undocking it from its location. You want to be able to click the uh, the actual bar itself if uh, you're trying to raise or lower the bar in order to change the sizes uh, of, of each of the individual sides. And again, you can also change you know the width uh, depending on them. I mean, usually, I don't need anything this big. Uh, and usually, guider. Uh, let's see, click on guider. I will put it under uh, so it's there, and then actually stretch this down. A little bit so that it's a little bit more compressed because I do like to see what's going on with my guiding over uh, the evening as you know as it's moving forward but I do have other things that I would probably put on there so I don't have a filter wheel eventually uh, the focuser is coming so I would probably want to put the focuser uh, back on there so as you see when I click it it goes back underneath the imaging uh, as a subfolder almost and I'm just going to add it in there like show uh, weather, I don't typically worry about too much because that's just uh, basically pulling temperature more than anything in dew point, which is what my Pegasus power box is doing for itself. So I don't necessarily worry about that so much. Uh, let's put our plate solving back, and there you go. You'll see it just added back in. Again, I'm never going to use those two at the exact same time. So if I do have to plate solve, there are occasions where. Uh, I, I may do like a two or three star alignment with the, with the uh, mount, and then I may go to an area of interest uh, because I am uh, calibrating PhD, and so when I'm calibrating PhD, uh, I'm, I'm not slewing it over specifically to any particular area. I'm just you know lining it over to the east and down near the horizon, and uh, popping it off and letting it uh, run, let PhD run its calibration programs. But while I'm there. I will go ahead and plate solve where I'm at so that the scope knows, or, or I should say Nina knows where it's at, and then my mount knows where it's at. So then when it is time to uh, go to Sky Atlas and do framing and then do a sequence run, uh, it knows where it's going. It's not kind of sitting out there lost because what it will do is plate solve before it leaves and then replate solve to where it's going and then plate solve however many times in order to, uh, to, to meet the framing requirements that I had already set up for it. So a lot of this is, in, and once I'm done with the plate solving and it puts everything together, then I'm going to go back to image and basically stay on image for the rest of the evening. Uh, image history, HFR statistics, I do like those kind of information. Again, I hate jumping around, so I typically like to dock these uh, over to the sides so it's a little bit easier for me to see just at a quick glance. So you can make this as busy as you want or uh, as light as you want. It kind of depends on what your preferences are. Uh, the autofocusing tab, again, this is something I would not typically use all at the same time. So I'm either going to be on plate solving or on autofocus uh, and then back on to image. So I will leave the, some of these blocked in here just because it's not immediate information that I need to see constantly. Like, as a, for instance, I want to see my telescope, where it is, how close to the meridian I'm getting, uh, my position on it, the camera, see what my cooling uh, is currently at, whether I'm cooling, whether I'm warming, my focuser, what the positions are on that I would want to see. Imaging time, again, that's just like a one-off uh, as I'm checking, but I do want to see a constant HFR history, and I want to see, be able to go in to see image history if I'm seeing some sort of anomaly that maybe I want to change or look at. Uh, statistics is also a good, uh, something good to look at. I do like this also, uh, docked out here to the side. But you'll see what happens uh, if you get too many things jumbled up here, you will get to a point where you'll have to do uh, your sliders and that can get a little bit confusing in the night depends so you know you can either move things around you can uh, change the heights of these again grab the bars that are not glowing so that you can adjust the height so you can do that uh, you can redock things left or right however you want in order to set it up specifically to the way that you want it to be set so that's uh, pretty much it uh, what did I do oh optimal exposure calculator this is actually kind of a cool uh, thing we're going to go over this uh, once I get a little bit more. It's, it's been updated, so I need to figure out exactly what it's doing. Uh, but we'll go over that, too, a little bit later on uh, one of the future uh, future 
videos that we're going to do as well as also the focuser because, um, again, that's a whole new thing when you're using an automatic focuser with, with Nina. Uh, it's a very, very nice feature uh, to be able to go in and check its own backlash, things like that. So we'll go over that in a future video. So that's pretty much it. So if you have any other questions or requests, please feel free to reach out to me either here on YouTube uh, just by clicking on the Get to Know or you can uh, leave a comment. I'd be glad to respond to any comments you have, good or bad, indifferent, doesn't matter. Be sure to like and subscribe so you can be alerted to when a new video is dropped. And if you want to visit the website, feel free to go to the old Roswell Astronomy website, which was www.roswell-astronomy.com. Uh, from there, you can also send me an email off the website. And uh, what else? That's pretty much it. So thanks for watching. And again, if you have anything you want to see, be sure to reach out and let me know. Thank you.